What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. And then also body size uh, is a contributing factor to this because usually it was the body size goes up, the lack of oxygen during our sleep, sleep yes. apnea causes our blood to get thicker more, even more than the steroids themselves. So like whether you get big using steroids or whether you get big naturally, just being big is going to cause thicker blood. Also. You know, anytime you have hypoxia, which happens with sleep apnea, your body signals a production of new red blood cells uh, because you need something to uh, a self re 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 how to say, fuck, sorry. Um, re uh, it's a tick. Yeah, checks and balances. So your body is it's just like the feedback loop. Yeah, feedback loop. So it's 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 secreting more uh, EPO basically, and now you have more red blood cell count being formed, and that's why this happens in hypoxic uh, hypoxic uh, stages. Same thing happens if you have low blood pressure. People with low blood pressure, they their uh, red blood cell count production uh, shoots up. Usually, people that chronically take Viagra or any, you know, vasodilators or minoxidil, for example, whenever you're in a hypoxic straight, uh, state, that's when your body composites and, and does so. Okay, that reminds me, we're also going to talk about what you had to say off camera another time about minoxidil in the heart. Uh, so I wrote that down for later. Okay, also electrolyte was the next one. So yes, everything, Alex, you say we agree. Uh, right. Electrolytes, um, Yes, donating blood, you lose especially iron too, because that's a little bit harder to replenish than electrolytes. But electrolytes, the simple solution would be just take in electrolytes after your blood donation. And if uh, check iron levels, if iron levels are low, then take in more iron. Um, you know, with iron, when you're taking steroids, we, we uh, accelerate our iron uptake. So a lot of times I've seen because when you take steroids and induce polycythemia, you're creating more red blood cell count and that iron is being stored, you know, at an exponential rate. And I've seen people, especially that are dieting, uh, males, uh, and even females, obviously, on steroids, they have, you know, high red blood cell count, great hemoglobin, and they have low iron levels. And they have anemic symptoms. It's called iron deficiency without anemia. And this is really common with people that use steroids. That's why I recommend people to eat uh, beef liver um, uh, two times per week, at least, or supplement with, with iron. Okay, excellent. And then uh, hydration, you said, with blood thickness. So, yeah, that's, that's another straw that breaks the camel's back. That's why... Uh, Trevor was always worried about me because when we started traveling to all these hot countries and, and I oh. used to drink tons of water and then we're traveling to these countries where water is a little harder to come by and we're sweating so much, our body's not adapted to this and uh, we're constantly dehydrated. And yes. when you have thicker blood and you're dehydrated, that's a huge problem. The solution is to not have the thick blood in the first place. And then if you do, exactly like you said, pay more attention to hydration. It's more important not to get dehydrated, but that's what's kind of scary because it's so eat like dehydration could happen so fast. So exactly. better just not to have the thick blood. And, and another problem to note about hydration is it's not just about drinking water because water is solid, uh, solid free. You need to maintain osmolarity. So you need to have an adequate balance of electrolytes and water and free water in your system. So a lot of times I've you seen do hydration people, packs. They make little yeah. hydration packs. You dump electrolytes yeah. into your water, which is like equivalent of like drinking like way more water than the actual water is worth. I've seen people that are cyclists and also I've seen people on raves that are, you know, on stimulants and they pass out. And as they drink more water, they, their symptoms get worse. And that's caused by hyponatremia. What happens is they dilute their blood with drinking excessive amount of water. And as they're sweating, they're sweating both sodium, you know, potassium, and also water. So by slamming just water, they're depleting, diluting their water, their blood is, you know, additionally. And they have like hyponatremia. And once your sodium levels drop drastically, then you're fucked. Then uh, the sodium goes intracellularly and basically bloats the cell. And it can cause, like, it can, it can cause a, 
uh, brain damage. Like that's caused uh, that's called overhydration, and people have have died like that. So, you know, that's why hydration is super important. And uh, cycl cyclists usually carry salt tabs with their water, like they have sodium tablets. Um, or even sodium and potassium tablets. And when they're drinking their water, they, they intake electrolytes yeah, as well. Yeah, my dad was a marathon runner, and, like, they all do that. Otherwise, you just excrete all of it while you're doing such a long race. But they don't do just water. And, and no, this, yeah, they do what Alex said, yeah. Bodybuilders are bigger. Like, they would need more. Right, than, exactly. So, and I, see, I cringe when I see them with fucking... 10 kilometer jogs, you know, 5% walking around and then drinking <laughs> water, you know, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Dude? Well, if they put a hydration pack in it, they're good. They just like any right. uh, like United States grocery stores have those little hydration packs. I don't know if they have them in Thailand, but those make yeah. a big difference. I notice like I'm actually holding the water when I dump right. one. We don't have them here. We don't have. We, Carolyn. We have Bring me one of those hydration pack things so I can show the camera. Dude, stop flexing. Shit. Stop we don't flexing? Have... Yeah, stop flexing with it. Because I... we don't have that here. Oh, flexing with the flexing with the electrolytes. <laughs> I'm I'm like, could you tell that I'm flexing my hamstring right now? <laughs> how can he tell? How can he tell I'm flexing my hamstring? <laughs> <laughs> As long as you're not flexing something else, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I'm always flexing something. <laughs> so anyone in the States, this is normally at any single thing. Store, yeah. I can't even talk. Yeah, those are nice. Th those are, they don't the have sodium, a like that. Potass like potassium, sea salt. But if you would put these in your water jugs, you would actually like stay hydrated longer. Yeah, but also very important. In order, in order for glycogen uh, to be stored, you need potassium and water and carbs. So glucose cannot uh, get stored unless you're, you have adequate potassium levels. And what happens if you don't store the glucose? You're, you're just going to burn it. So glucagon, basic, basically... Uh, glucagon causes uh, gluconeogenesis and glucogenolysis based up just to raise your blood sugar. Because if you're if you're like doing activity and there's nowhere and as you're burning glucose, it has to come from somewhere. And if you're not replenishing it, uh, it's just gonna start taking from your muscles or even breaking down your muscles in order to to utilize for energy. So you'll be just depleted. So you need you need adequate potassium. You need water and you need glucose and a gram of, of, uh, of, of uh, carbs basically draws in three grams, mm. three, four grams of water, but you still need carriers. That's that why when people utilize diuretics, they screw themselves themselves up because without the, the electrolytes, you're not going to store glycogen. Glycogen is just a polysaccharated form of glucose. You know, blood, blood pressure is next. So, uh, um, right. the other, next, this is the next uh side effect of steroids on the heart. Why Alex thinks that steroids are bad for the heart versus and I'm the, trying to say not as bad. So, yeah, blood yeah. pressure can be mitigated though, right? Right, yeah, can, right. I mean, uh. I, uh, I've now started taking uh, Telmas Arden. I've got low, low Sarden here also as an alternative. And those seems to bring blood pressure down. Before I started using those, I would use uh, Cialis, Viagra. I still take that every day. Uh, I'm able to maintain really good blood pressure now. I didn't always. Before, I didn't care about blood pressure. And it's, I just thought, to me, I just thought, you know what, 140, 145, I'll just, that's fine for me all year. That's what it used to be. And then now I decided, no, 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 I always want 120. And so that's what I maintain it at now, which I think to me is perfect. Um, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the tell me certain is good. Uh, you know, years ago, the first line of therapy were ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting ACE inhibitors. Now ARBs have been showing to have less side effects and more favorable clinical outcome. They're good for preserving uh, proteinuria, basically. So when you have high blood pressure and you eat a lot of protein, 
uh, the blood goes through because of the high blood pressure through the glomeruli of the kidney, which are the filters, and that damages the the, the kidneys, leading to kidney injury. Tomisartan uh, basically prevents that, so and also improves renal blood flow, and that's great. You know. The problem when when you're utilizing uh, PD-5 inhibitors such as Cialis or Viagra, it's a va- it causes va- vasodilation, and whenever you do that, you inc- you activate the sympathetic nervous system through the baroreflex. So you have baroreceptors that have a crucial role in regulating your autonomic nervous system, and when they sense your blood pressure, your your blood vessels being dilated, they they reactively stimulate noradrenaline release. Mm-hmm. And now what happens is you can get reflex tachycardia. A lot of people, when they take Cialis or Viagra, they have pounding in their chest or in the head. You know, they have, um, they feel it, like they feel bad. Some people don't feel this effect, some people do. But the problem with that is if you add alcohol on top of that or, or anything that causes vasodilation, that it, it can exponentially enhance this effect. And a lot of people I've known, my uncle, my uncle actually died from taking, I don't know whether it was uh, Viagra or Cialis, uh, after drinking, like he went to a bar, drank all night, took it, and then his heart, you know, just gave out. So I wouldn't use that as a, as a form of, you know, blood pressure uh, controlment, you know, like I would stay with the arm, like that's great. And if that's not sufficient, I would either utilize a, a low dose of beta locker or an ACE inhibitor because... Recently, in studies and, and in practice, a good nephrologists even combine low dose of ACE inhibitors with, with an ARP, and it shows additional cardioprotective and renal protective effects. So you don't you don't need to you to utilize Cialis or Viagra. Okay, uh, and and for my blood pressure, also, yeah, I take uh, Nebivolol, uh, five milligrams. I love Nabivalol because I already have, like we talked about my stress issue before. And you said like, you doubt that I'm in a stressful state all the time right. in all stages of my life. But right. actually I think I do have, a. I don't doubt that. We're just saying that, you know, it doesn't overshadow what else is going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good way of, re- yes. Good way of stating it also. Yeah. So I, I think, yeah, I am in a stressful, st- I think it's a personality thing. Some people are just stressed all the time and some people aren't. And there's benefits and drawbacks to both. Like being a stressed person means also being very high productive, but then also having a lot of side effects of that. You know, having adrenaline all the time. is. This is, is Tony wishing he was stupider, Loki. Yeah. I went through some phases where I would intentionally not take any nootropics and intentionally try to limit the stimulation to have my brain atrophy. 